Friday and good afternoon on the East Coast. Afternoon, Central Time, morning, Mountain Time, morning, morning. West Coast, and uh, various times around the world. So how's everyone doing? Doug, Isabel are here to join me. We might be joined by Matt Tolman later if he finishes up. I think he's on something with Rip Esselstyn, right? The, the Plant Strong right. podcast of some kind. Is that Rip's he podcast is. or for us? That's that's, uh, that's for Plants Palooza. For our thing. Okay, good. So people can go the teaser there. We haven't, uh, haven't announced that there's going to be another plant to blues yet. This is breaking news. Oh, I mean, so there's no Break opt-in it. page or anything yet. This is just a pre. Yeah. No. Heads up way in advance. Okay. Special good. news. All right. Well, good. All right. Um, I forgot to adjust the uh, title, even though we just talked about that. So that's not good. Um, we got some fun stuff today. We got the best gifts of best fitness gifts of this entire year. Already out. Uh, so I'm going to put that in the title and people can come running to get that information from us. Best fitness gifts but of the entire year for 2024. And we're only four months in, three months in, four yeah, months in. They already know. People are, it's already known what it is. It's already written what will be the best gifts of the year. Uh, all right. People are checking in now. Leslie Light, <laughs> Leslie Light, Leslie Knight, Bianca Phillips, our Friday exclusive person who only comes on Fridays. And Britters, who's here all the time, and I'm sure many more will be joining us in a few minutes. Uh, all right. In the meantime, what do we got? I know Isabel, you got this new watch that we might talk about. Anyone? Anything else? Any other goings on, or should we just should we just get right into the technology update, technology minute? I think so. I got nothing else, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, uh, no, I got nothing. Uh, well, let's do a tech let's minute with see. Isabel. Oh well, I got something. I right. was oh. yesterday. I was bragging about my my NCAA bracket, and it's continuing to crush. I don't know oh, why yeah. everybody just doesn't pick, do all their picks. Because, because Wait, you had a, did you have North Carolina yesterday losing? I didn't. That I missed that one. But everything else, like yeah, I had uh, Indiana over Illinois, and um, nice. I don't know. I'm just feeling really good. Feeling very strong. Still in the top uh, eighty thousand of all. ESPN brackets out of mm -hmm. Whoa. Million. Whoa. Does the winner of that thing get like a million dollars or something that ESPN challenge? Or you have to have a perfect yeah. bracket? No, no. The winner gets, yeah, He's it's like a million win. bucks for them. Oh. Okay. Doug's coming for it. He's oh, ready. I'm, I'm coming for it. Sure, Burger King million dollar, ESPN million dollar. You name it. You, you can't win. You're, already, you're mathematically it. eliminated from that already, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> probably <laughs> so, but... <laughs> All right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's good, Doug. Glad to hear your bracket is intact. Uh, I think I'm winning my family's little competition, but that's not saying much. I okay. haven't done a bracket in several years. I think I, I said we need to get a uh, a team, a company bracket going so that I actually have somebody who cares about sports. Um, mm. My family refuses. Yeah. 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 We should do a company wide. Done. All right. <laughs> Time for next year. All right. Good. Uh, all right, well, let's hear about this watch, Isabel. What'd you get? Oh, Apple Watch, Garmin. It's a new Garmin. Um, I, as as we know, I am a runner, so I upgraded my Garmin watch. I had my last one for like seven or eight years, um, and I've had my eye on this one for a while. And Garmin had a random sale, so I went ahead and got it. It's a solar, so it's, it's solar powered too. Um, but it's the Forerunner nine five five. No, no shout out or referral or anything. It's just the one that I thought would fit me the best. Um, and it's been super cool. Like I've one, I've never worn like a watch to bed. Didn't right. think I ever would, but it tells me fun stuff. And this is the problem is that now, now I want to know all the fun stuff. Like I want to know my recovery time. It's interesting. I have, I have a small child who still wakes me up a lot at night. Um, so the sleep score that I've been getting is just terrible. Cause they're like, yeah. Oh, you're, you've been restless. You've been waking up a lot at night. I'm like, yes, I know. <laughs> Can I like input that somewhere that I have a child that wakes me up? <laughs> no, but it's been cool. It shows my training readiness. It adjusted what I should do for training today because I was, I didn't have quite, um, quite the rest that I should have yesterday. So it, it updated me to a recovery workout instead of like a, a tempo or, or mm -hmm. threshold workout. Now, will you listen to that? Will you let that thing dictate, uh, <laughs> your workouts and stuff or you say i'm not gonna t let the machine tell me what to do i know i know what i need to do i i'm trying it i'm giving it a try to see how see, to see what it tells me to see how accurate it is and i like i don't often do like tempo and threshold workouts 
Um, cause I don't really care about speed very much, but I probably should do them. They're definitely mm-hmm. the things Doug, Doug probably feels me on this, but they're the ones that I'm like, nah, I don't need, I'm not going to do that unless something tells me to do it, which is my watch right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to try it. I'll do report back what I think. It's a, it's a race. It's so, it's so oh, it's, oh, oh. yeah, it has me, um, set up for the race that I'm doing in June. Okay. Yeah. I look forward to hearing about how this goes. You know, Matt and I have talked a lot about, uh, getting too much data and if that's, sometimes a bad thing um it's probably it's probably a little bit too much for me right now but i'm i'm a nerd so i'm like ooh, mm-hmm. like it has my altitude acclimatization or is that the word acclimation whatever mm-hmm. and i i'm not quite it says i'm not quite acclimated to the to the altitude i live at but that's because i've only had it for <laughs> for a week <laughs> uh, i mean you know so like a good friend of mine i mm-hmm. uh, just ran a race is his first marathon and he um a couple miles in was like uh moving out of zone two and he wanted to run the whole thing in zone two and he was struggling to like keep his heart rate down he was just obsessing over his heart rate uh and i think it like really played a major mind trick on him for the race because his watch was telling him that his heart rate was too high and and he was like then freaking out about it and you know for the next i think probably 10 miles was just kind of freaking out about his his heart rate and like I, he was telling me that story. This is no, I'm not trying to knock him at all. Uh, he ran an awesome race and it was an awesome accomplishment. Um, but I was just thinking like, it, it would have been so much better if he just didn't have that information and he yeah. could have just focused on how he felt and focused on his run and not, not worried so much about the, the heart race stuff. I, I, you know, like, I, I don't know. I mean, it, that is very helpful tool and comes in very handy when you need it and when you want it, but it can also be a major distraction yep. and like play major mind tricks to you. But it might've saved him, right? If he didn't have that thing telling it's him possible. to go down, yeah. that could have ruined his entire race if he went way too hard. It's possible. Yeah, it's, it's possible. possible. Yeah. It's uh, to me, it either like, it either is going to help you or it's going to hurt you. Like there's no really in between and you have to know, you have to know yourself and how you respond to that kind of data to know if it's going to be helpful or not. Right. Um, like my, to, you know, move it away from running training. Well, actually I was going to say to something more relatable, but motorcycle racing is not that relatable, but my husband uses, uh, or he used to use a lap predictor. Um, so like during the race, it would tell him what his lap time is going to be. And it was just killing him. Cause he, like, if he messed up a little bit and his prediction went down, um, mm-hmm. then he, then, you know, it just impacted his performance. So he took it off and it's been so much better for, for him. So like, he's definitely the kind of person that can't, can't deal with that kind of data. I, I don't really have that kind of problem. Like if I look at my watch and it's telling me that I'm running a slow mile or my heart rate's high, like I'm not too concerned mm-hmm. about that kind of thing. But what if, what if every time you sat down at your computer and open or sat down at your desk and open up your computer, a little thing said, you're going to be 85% efficient today, or you're going to be 62% efficient today. <laughs> and just like predicted how well you were going to, you were going to work. I just shut motiva- it down. Would that be motivating to you to try to beat it or what did that? No. Uh, <laughs> be like, yeah, not okay. for me. Fifty percent, yeah, I'm always fifty. I said fifty percent of the time. Not for me. What? If, that would definitely demotivate me. Like, I, I would just be like, well, sixty-two percent. I guess I'm not doing anything. <laughs> what? What about you guys? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know either. I I think the hard thing though, I think in general, I mean, I I haven't done enough of it, but I would think if you like had trained with that thing a whole lot. Like that's a that's a really great way to pace yourself in a race, I think, because you you have especially if you haven't done that many of them. Like, I remember when I was first getting into running, and I just had really still no clue what pace I could hold for for a mm-hmm. marathon. Like even once I'd done the eighteen and twenty milers, because you wouldn't do those near your race pace, so I just had to constantly be guessing at what could I actually run that day. And always you end up going too fast because always, I mean, me anyway. You just the energy of the thing pulls you, and then by the mile twenty, you're just done. And you end up running really what is a, a terrible race compared to what you could have run had you had an expert who knew everything told you exactly what pace you needed to run. And I think the hard thing can be that expert or be very close to it. Uh, so I think your friend did the right thing, Doug. I think he did exactly. I don't know. I just I think, don't, like, like I just I think a zone I two marathon is. I I have no hope of that. That's impressive. <laughs> I mean, I see what you're saying, and I think you're you know I think you're probably right, but I, it, to me, it's just like the mind the mind tricks that it can play on you. And like he, he got really obsessed over it. his telling of it is that he just like began to really stress about it. And then that probably mm-hmm. made things a lot worse. Um, why, didn't he slow down and why didn't he slow down to stop stressing? Well, he did. He kept slowing down and his heart rate wasn't dropping as quickly as he wanted it to. And um, hmm. 
I don't know. I mean, and that was probably making him more stressed and his heart rate was probably going up because of it, you know? And, and so like, I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I see what you're saying. Uh, but I also, I also think that there's, there's some clear downsides to too much data, uh, both like when you're running, but also just in life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. I, I was still on the sleep monitors. Like when it tells you to slow down today or, uh, that you didn't sleep well, when you felt you wake up and feel like you're good. And then it tells you you didn't sleep well. And then suddenly you feel bad or more tired. Mm-hmm. Uh, it makes me just want to mm-hmm. ignore it. I don't know. It's, it's rough. Um, but that's cool. Isabel, why did you say you're drinking two water bottles now? How is that related <laughs> to your watch? <laughs> because, because it told me that I needed more recovery today. So I'm, I'm consuming more electrolytes mm. and more fluids and trying to like boost myself up for my long run. This, I do this all the time though. This is not, mm-hmm. this is not actually, my watch didn't tell me to drink more water. This is pretty common. Okay. But I am thinking I, about it. See, I think that can get you in trouble. The watch tells you need more recovery. So suddenly you start doing brand new things, putting electrolytes in your water, bringing two water mm. bottles around. Like it just introduces all these different variables. I don't know, I, but I, I've, I mean, I've been through all this too. I, I get it. That's it's again, this is normal behavior for me though, but it is a good point though. Like how much, how much do we actually, how much emphasis do we give these kind of things when they tell us, like you said, like if it tells me that my sleep was terrible, but I wake up feeling fine, then I'm, then I'm going to be like, wait, but. Like, do I listen to this or do I listen to like how I feel? Yeah, yeah, yep. Whoop, Whoop was a sponsor of New Mean Athlete Radio one time during a hundred miler that I ran, and uh, I just remember the the recovery prediction was like, I don't know, it was like forty days or something like that. That it was, it was like <laughs> Those limit your days. activity for the next forty days. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, I I don't like when my watch tells me those things. Like, you need to rest mm-hmm. three days after this after yeah. this long run. I'm like, that's. <laughs> Yeah, I I made that whoop. Maybe it was the early version, but I remember driving my car and it thought I was doing a yoga workout or something. <laughs> and I was like, this is no good. And then also, the, when I really turned on these things is when I I was struggling so much with my deep sleep, could not get the number up no matter what I tried. Mm-hmm. And then I finally found something that doubled my deep sleep, and that was getting the newest version of the uh, Aura Ring. It, up, upgrading the Aura Ring doubled my sleep, and I thought, there's there's something up here. This is uh, why am I listening to this thing? <laughs> yeah anyway um I'll, all right I'll people here back. uh i don't know how to pronounce this name they were here last time saying nice things giliardo's dad's dad uh but they said they like the show the show makes them happy this is what i'm talking about but then where's the fourth person and then the hashtag where is matt tolman is now been created so That's we'll see one. if that mystery that any traction disappearance from mt oh boy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He, he maybe we already said where he is. Maybe you joined late. Uh, he's he's on Rip Esselson's, or he's having Rip Esselson on our podcast for, for an upcoming event, uh, and he may be here later. I'm just not sure how long he and Rip will chat it up. So we'll see. Who knows? All right. Well, ready to jump into our weather report uh, since we are doing this morning show, afternoon show format nowadays. Um, we get some good ones today. You ready? Got the sound machine. Got the sound machine fired up. Here it right. goes. There it is. Uh, all right. Yesterday, Doug, on the morning show, we we teased that Sam Bankman Freed was going to learn his fate. It turned out that fate, I think, came out while we were on the show, basically. Uh, 25 years he got, which was kind of right in the middle of what uh, the judge or the state was asking for and what his lawyers were asking for. So I I don't, I don't know. If, I mean, how can you be happy with that? I don't know, knowing that you got the next <laughs> quarter of century. Uh, uh, he'll, he'll get out for for. Good, good behavior. Good behavior well, enough. people were recommending that he not even get sentenced this long because of his vegan diet. They said this is evidence that this is a, a good person here. Uh, he wants to do good for other beings. He's not selfish in this case anyway. And he's he's been subsisting on on beans and lettuce, beans and brown lettuce, they said, and over or undercooked rice. Um, but now his, he's going to be at a low to medium security prison, which the judge recommended because he, ha- he uh, has been diagnosed with autism and something else, maybe just his uh, his his you know, public profile um, that he's going to be in something that is fairly easy camp cupcake kind of, kind of deal, I guess. But what he has there on the prison's commissary list is rice, almonds, and Skittles drink mix. That's, that seems to like be the extent of the food. Uh, they said he'll be eating a lot of peanut butter. So I guess that's another option. Um, but I don't know. I mean, this is, do you think there should be better food than that? If you're in a if you're in a prison for 25 years, like should should that be a little bit more? 
Well, Surely there's options. more than that, right? I mean, there has to be some vegetables. <laughs> like, yeah, like broccoli. No broccoli. Right? I said he ate canned vegetables. Peas? Maybe I guess that came as well. Uh, wasn't okay. just the lettuce, but canned oh. vegetables. That's, that's not that good. But, but that's you know, the commissary. That's the thing you buy, right? Like the cafeteria might have. Right. Option. I mean, you, I think it's like a um, like a grocery store. Yeah. Right. So that's probably what he would buy for his snacks, and then he probably goes to the cafeteria to get like a hot meal, uh-huh. which is like probably gruel or something like that. <laughs> Definitely gruel. <laughs> I mean, I gotta say, it would be very hard to be in prison for the next 25 years and uh and think about like a very very limited diet that you will have to eat for the next 25 years that would be hard right like it seems like maybe this is i mean i don't obviously know a whole lot about prison life but uh i would think the meal times is like kind of a highlight of the day sometimes right? you get a nice warm meal three times at least you got that yeah. uh and maybe the food's terrible sometimes i bet it's not always terrible i don't know uh <laughs> We need prison Mike to come in and tell us we what do. to do. That's what, that's what I'm waiting for is prison yeah. Mike to come in. I don't know nearly enough <laughs> yeah, about the prison, about the system to know like what kind of, what kind of food that they have. Yeah. But it would just be hard if, if like. Almonds as a snack are- though. I mean, not that bad. No, that's not so bad. If that's it's a snack. Good for yeah. brain health. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, yeah, I don't. I think it would. Be, I think it would be very hard. But you hear about people who uh, go vegan in prison, so maybe it's not. That is as actually bad. very true. Yeah, mm-hmm. there might be lots of like vegetables and starch. It's probably it's probably like a you know standard American diet of. Yeah. You got your 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 plate, your different things of the Pudge. plate. Yeah, there should be some good potato dishes. I would think. Yeah, probably. Um, there was a story that we talked about on the morning show before about someone in Switzerland, an animal rights activist who was vegan and he wouldn't eat anything in prison or something like that. And and I think it ended up being like decided that his that his yeah he took them to court uh, over this thing that there weren't you know food options and this was you know an ideology or whatever that should have been protected. And I think it was ruled that it that yes it should be protected and it was. Uh, so he got some decent options, but I, you know it's probably just a bare minimum thing. Um, all right, uh, Giuliardo's dad's dad says, reason Sam Begman Free deserves a proper meal. He's a human being. He's sentient, sentient, whatever you want to say for there, and he's vegan. So if you're vegan, you deserve a proper meal, apparently. Uh, Why wouldn't you? I mean, a human, I he's a human, should deserves a proper yeah, meal. Exactly. Right. And then Joey Carbstrong, who's got this new movie out uh, about, about, I think, in the UK, maybe exposing the pig farming industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says he decided to go vegan while in prison, but he uh, started beans. when he got released. Okay, got so he mm-hmm. made the decision, but then said, "Once I get out of here, I'm gonna change my way." Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of feel bad for SBF here. This is, and it's because he's vegan. It, I mean, it connects with me. And I, I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just can't imagine having to eat that terrible and, food. And, yeah. and he's a crypto trader, and you're a crypto trader. <laughs> you're basically <laughs> the same right? guy. You could be <laughs> in jail for the next 25 years if you screw up, screw something up here, man. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, should just, I should do what he did, but then just stop before it gets illegal and uh, make all that money and then uh-huh. just get out of the game. It's a good way to do it. <laughs> stop before it's legal. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So that's uh, there's your SBF update. I'm, I'm sure there will be more. So we'll, we'll keep you abreast of those. <laughs> I'm sure people are can't wait to hear them. Yeah, really. dying to know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is from uh, Green Queen. They reported uh, that 95% of Starbucks shareholders have voted against PETA's call to drop the non-dairy surcharge. I don't fully understand how these board goings-on work, uh, but apparently at the annual shareholder meeting, which was on March 13th, so two weeks ago, uh, there was a PETA manager of corporate responsibility there, and her name's Jacqueline Sarda Siege. I don't, I don't get why there would be a PETA rep like at the Starbucks thing. Do they just petitioning, have a- Petitioning for a change. Does that mean they own enough shares like to get in the meeting? Like they probably, I think some somebody somebody not. owns enough shares. I don't know if it's like if it's PETA that owns the shares, but somebody does. I mean, if if they have a, if they have a representative there, right? Then she must have have earned the right to be there. I don't think I could just go to the Starbucks meeting without having having started. No, I'm sure she's a shareholder. Yeah. Okay. Or, so they, or they invest so they can then get to the places. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. So she was there, spoke up about this thing, and uh, they basically said they said they said no, we're not we're not doing this. First of all, it was voted 95 percent don't want to change this thing, uh, the statement that they responded to a proposal for a report said, commissioning a separate report on the impact of our pricing strategy for plant-based milk customizations would divert resources from our ongoing efforts to expand, plant-based, <laughs> expand plant-based options for our customers. Uh, so they're basically saying, we want to keep 
doing plant-based stuff. This just isn't the, the most important thing we can focus on right now. Oh, uh, so you know, a that, report that, on the pricing. I think that she seems... wanted, I think she wanted a special report on this thing, on this strategic decision. Should we, should we, I mean, that sounds like something you throw out the intern and they just put together a report. That doesn't sound <laughs> too difficult. Like, I can't. That, right. There's no way that's going to derail their either. efforts, their plant-based efforts. That, that sounds that's a cop yeah. out on Starbucks. Well, the, the argument was basically that like it costs more to buy plant-based milk, and that's why they charge more because it costs more. But Peta Peta was saying like charge more for the not plant-based milk to deter people from using oh, that oh, as a, oh, as I a statement. Of they weren't they weren't going for price parity. They were trying to actually increase not uh, dairy milk. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but that was yeah, my understanding. That was suggested. I don't know if that's what the report was supposed to be about. I think they may have wanted just them to deep dive into this pricing question and whether they should change that pricing anyway. But one of the suggestions was make make the dairy the more expensive thing. No, and the argument here from that. the sake of inside the company is that like customers generally like the idea of the feeling like it's a sustainable option that you're paying money for. Mm -hmm. um, and so even if this weren't great for the bottom line at first, it is a good long-term investment. And so, you know, who knows if that's true or not. Uh, but it appears that that's, I mean, all these efforts, all these James Cromwell goofy ads and things like that, uh, it's just not really doing anything. So they I, I said don't know. that like, this is just in the U S so like internationally Starbucks, you like, they don't have an upcharge for, mm. for plant-based milks. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, you're right. It says in the UK, China, Argentina, yeah. France, Belgium, and the Netherlands, this is not the case. Uh, but in the U S up to 90 cents more for non-dairy milk. That's a lot. I'd save a lot of money per year if that wasn't the case. My household would. There you go. Not me. Doug not. Doug has boycotted his local uh, store. Even though they're just a good tax-paying part of the <laughs> economy, he's boycotted. That's they're charging him 90 cents that. more. Of course he's boycotted. <laughs> Is it 90 cents? Up to 90 cents. I think it's 70. I, yeah, like I think it. it's like 70 to That's 90. I think the, uh, I mean, those don't they have like so hemp milk at some locations now too? I think those might be the 90 cents one. Mm. That's I've never, never seen that. It is crazy. I mean, why not make it like a quarter? I mean, that's, it just uh, seems more. Or just don't charge more. There's no all. way that that serving is right. 70 cents. Or there is no way. More. There's no exactly. way. It's just, it's too much. But to, maybe, but to have several milks at all, maybe that whole process, overhead, training employees, maybe all that is like considered expensive. No way. No way. <laughs> There's no way. And you don't not have for, to have all the different ones. All you have to have is oat milk and soy milk, right? Like, but, the, but why would they be trying to gouge the plant based people with this? Like I because you pay it, you suckers. Can. Yeah. Well, they could just gouge everybody with everything then. And they do, I guess. But they do. Their <laughs> drinks are like eight dollars. Yeah. And the oleado is like 15 bucks. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. So there's Starbucks. Uh and finally, good news this time. Uh Not Mayo, which is the Kraft Heinz Not Company. They've they've partnered with this Not Company and now they're making all these good products like the mac and cheese a few weeks ago. It was told that one's coming. Uh, they've launched the vegan mayonnaise squeeze bottle. It's already been out as a jar. The big news, though, is that this is the squeeze bottle. The jar apparently recently shot the people up people what they want. <laughs> what? Give the people what they want. <laughs> exactly. Squeeze bottle. Exactly. Uh, the jar went it became the second most popular plant-based mayo brand, I guess probably behind Veganaise, or maybe the Hellman's Vegan. I don't really know. Uh, mm -hmm. But not mayo went to number two, and now this they got this squeeze bottle coming out and a new campaign that, honestly, to me, puts the Oatly advertising to shame. This one is the brand is launching the campaign. It's called Mayo Haters. And the idea <laughs> is that the self-proclaimed Mayo haters in the ads, people who say they hate Mayo, are going to also hate this because it's so similar to the real thing. And that's a pretty <laughs> good ad. If I watch that, like I'm, I always consider myself kind of a Mayo hater. Not really anymore. I, I enjoy it now. Mm -hmm. well, I, but when I was an omnivore, I just didn't ever like mayonnaise. Uh, so I don't know. I think uh, I I'd pay attention to that. And I'd, I'd say, well, it's, that's funny. But then if you're a mayo hater and you just got targeted by that, it's not going to obviously make you do it. But I guess the the non-haters might say, okay, I'll give that a try. So I like it. That's what Oatly needs, this kind of stuff, instead of the garbage they're putting out. This is way better. I do like the idea of the mayo hater. I feel like mayonnaise is a pretty uh, – you're either on one side or the other yeah, side. You either like it or you like really, really hate it. I'm, I'm definitely a hater. I Who doesn't like mayo? hate mayonnaise. Oh. We don't. What? Oh. I will, I'll use it in recipes, like if I'm making something that has to have mayonnaise in it, but ooh, no, hard pass. Yeah. The like tank. Ooh. So you won't be buying the squeeze bottle, Isabel? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm here for it. I think it's a great idea. I think vegan mayo is actually pretty good. I, I don't know why I smell it's just a little bit better. I think it's delicious. I use it all the time. 
Um, the so all right the the but the problem with vegan mayo oftentimes and this may be the case with all mayo I, I have no idea but I think it's been a long time since I ordered mayo or got a jar of mayo but by the end it gets kind of separated and like watery mm -hmm. like kind yeah. of gross yeah. like the, like the yeah. last like quarter of the bottle so if you had a if you had a bottle like that that you could shake up real well before you squeeze it on right and you I never have to that. see it you never you see it the you never see it the water you never see it. I think it's good. I think yeah, it's very right. good. That For people good. who, again, people who like mayonnaise, I think this is great. Why not have a squeeze bottle of it? Seems pretty easy. There's probably a whole lot wasted, though, in a squeeze bottle. I mean, I know there is. The kind that clings to the sides, whereas in a jar, you oh, can yeah. get it with a knife. Mm -hmm. Good point. So, right. Then you cut the bottle. Do you not do that? You cut the bottle in half and get in there? No, no, we definitely don't no? do that. Oh, we don't, no, we, don't, we don't waste in this household. <laughs> cut the bottle. <laughs> Use a little squeegee thing to. Well, that's, I think out. Carly in her scrappy kitchen, scrappy cooking stuff has uh, good advice for those kind of things. You put other mm -hmm. stuff into the jar, like a mustard bottle, yeah. shake it up, make oh, yeah. it wet. Mm -hmm. So you can definitely do that with this plant based. I, I do that one. Yeah, that's there you go. Boom. Go to yeah. go to plantu.com. Get yourself pre order that book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Do that. Reminder Carly's going to be on the show in about two weeks' time from now. So that'll be fun. Um, all right, a little Twitch contingent here. We got some some calls for a raid and uh, uh, other stuff I don't understand. But uh, good to see yeah. Twitch people watching. So hello, hello Twitch. Uh, please spread the word. Make the comments. Do what, do whatever you want. Do whatever it is you do over there. Give us, I, I, I looked up what XII raid is uh, and couldn't figure it out. <laughs> I wasn't sure if maybe we were gonna get like bombarded with a bunch of people. Right, it people. looks like that. It looks like there's two raids, two people mm -hmm. raided. Yeah, uh, but I don't know. Gene Ogden points out squeeze bottle equals plastic brownie face. No, no one mm. jumped at that. That is problem. a really good. That is a really good point. Good point. Yeah. Is plastic any worse than glass though? Really? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hands down, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Harder to recycle. I know that much. We could put all the recycling in one place, except for the glass has to go in its own place out in the garage. That's because it actually gets recycled. So the plastic mostly yeah, just gets in the dump. Yeah, that makes sense. into the ocean. All right, good. So there you go. There's your uh, there's your weather report. That's the goings on. By the way, we bought the uh, we have not got the the Notco uh, mac and cheese yet, but I'd I'd get that the, the classic blue box mac mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. But we did. My daughter wanted it the other day. She was just said, "I would love to have that." And I said, "Well, it's coming out soon," but we couldn't find it in the store. But we did find uh, the Daya or Daya version and bought yeah. that. And it's not a it's not a cheesy powder like the craft stuff used to be. It's uh -huh. uh it's like a cheesy squeeze pouch that you that you make the macaroni elbows and then you squeeze that in. So we haven't made it yet, but uh it's we do have it. I think it was like six bucks or something. And mm. you know, my problem with the dye is is that it just doesn't really melt and taste good. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe this where it's already squeezy pouch might be better. Keep us posted. I will do that. Make All right, be more, more Twitch people saying hi. Hello, back cool data. Thank you for showing up, commenting. Uh, all right, let's get to the main article of the day, which is the best fitness gifts of the entire year. This is from variety.com. Uh, so these are the gifts you give all year long for different things. No specific holiday here. This is just when you need a gift, you just turn to this. If you got a fitness fanatic in your life, um, we've already talked about the Garmin, the Garmin, whatever model you have there, Isabel. Um, uh, hey. I've heard the Apple Watch. I think that's coming up, actually. Well, I will, I'll save my thoughts on the Apple Watch. All right, number four, number one thing is a water bottle. Uh, the the Brewmate Rotera 35-ouncer. Doug, are you going to put these pictures up on the screen? Is that possible? I can, yeah. yeah I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can. Uh, they talk about the Hydro Flask, the Stanley Quencher. By the way, my household has two Stanley Cups now, Doug. A couple weeks ago, I'd never heard of it when you mentioned it. <laughs> oh, really? Now, <laughs> now two of them. Yeah, now we got For, who, who is using them? My son and daughter. Each of them has their own Stanley Cup. Is uh, that a so? Uh, I've been curious about this because uh, the Stanley Cup craze, I think, blew up a little while ago from like the soccer mom type woman. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, but I think kids are now using it too. And I was wondering if it was uh, like boys and girls. No, it's kind of a girl thing. That's the thing. My mom got it for my son for Christmas as a great gift, and he was very excited. But he had a few reservations about it because it was, it's kind of a girl trend. So mm -hmm. then my daughter got one, but he still uses it. It's nice to have. But it's a uh, cup. Yeah, I don't really get it. Like, why do they want that huge cup? It's like, what does it do? How is <laughs> how is there anything feminine about a cup? I need to look this up. I I don't know anything about the Stanley Cup. So. I mean, come on, you don't know about the Stanley Cup craze? No, no, really, I know nothing about this. No. 
the Starbucks, yeah. I think it was Starbucks Stanley Cups. They were selling at Target or some something like that. Uh, like they literally had fight. People were literally throwing punches over trying to get them and limit one per <laughs> things customer. I will, things I will never understand. Somebody explain that to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you don't have one, then you can't post it on TikTok. So you got to get one to to help your TikTok uh, account. All right, but this this article is not trying to get you to stealing. No, this is for the newest one, the Brumate, uh, the What's twist this? strip, twist sip straw lid, uh, on demand sanitary sips keeps ice for more than forty or twenty four hours. That's a good thing. I'm out on this. I I do not. I hate the water bottles that you can't put in the dishwasher. And I don't know if this is one or not, but they're like thirty five bucks. You and then you got to wash them every time. Mm -hmm. I hate the idea of this. I like a good old plastic Dasani bottle or something, and you carry that around for a week, <laughs> refill it, and then when you're done, you throw it out. You use it many times. You and carry around a Dasani bottle no. for a week? Yeah, no. and, you're, yeah and you look cooler than everyone else because you're not trying too hard with these fancy things. You just you just kind of take what comes your way and you use it. It's all about the look. <laughs> Looking cool with your Dasani bottle. I, I disagree fundamentally with that, but... I, I also disagree fundamentally with that. But but I'm, I'm not... I mean, this is... I mean, there's... Uh, there's how many There's insulated water, water bottles, bottles now are there now? And this is a bad, this is a bad gift. Bad gift unless somebody needs an insulator water bottle, which I don't think anybody actually does. Right, nobody but. does. All right, on to the I next. I use an insulator water bottle and I love it. What are you talking about? Regardless, but, there's always going to be a water bottle on this kind of list because water bottles are always, whether it's a good gift or not, Doug disagrees. But if you're going to get somebody a water bottle, get him, get him an insulated one. You know what's, you know what is an underrated water bottle now that used to be super popular. Nalgene? A, good, a classic Nalgene bottle, yeah. Classic Nalgene. I'm the a, BPA I like the thing. classic Nalgene. Nalgene, I think. People, They're people... BPA free, but that's where yeah. that's like everybody moved away from them because of that. Yeah, I mean, all these popular ones now, I think, are metal inside. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which, yeah, I, which I understand. Was... I mean, Nalgene's plastic, but uh, man, I, I have, plastic. like, we still, I still use a Nalgene bottle from time to time that I have had since college, which was uh 20 some odd years ago and they, they get way smellier than the metal ones do no you can not if you not if you keep them clean and you can put them in the dishwasher yeah yeah and that's good i like that's it's, for it's that a, reason I think it's you're a great right. water bottle yeah. metal ones get all dinged up and they don't sit properly on the yeah that's that's true on I your guess. table yep all right moving on uh both <laughs> quiet comfort earbuds too i think uh i think aaron has these I don't know if she got quiet comfort or the other one. She actually doesn't love the noise cancellation because it makes it you can't hear like cars and things. Mm -hmm. So she sometimes just wears one of them. Is that your move too, Doug? I think maybe she learned it from you. Uh, man, these these graphics are not good. Um, yeah. So well, uh, I don't have the Bose, but I have now. I'm running with um, just AirPod ear, and I always turn off noise cancellation because unless like I'm on an airplane or something where I really truly need to cancel cancel noise. Yeah, because you can't hear any cars, you can't hear people on the trail, you can't hear bears. Like it's it's just a not a good uh, not a good move, I don't think, to be outside interacting with people with noise cancellation. I just wear I just wear the one. That's that's my game. Mm -hmm. I typically do that too. But this is good. I think these things have come a long way. I know Aaron's down really good when I've listened to them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. they sound awesome. Uh, Holden has, I think, a pair of uh, Beats. Is that what they're called? No, no longer Beats by Dre. They're just Beats now. Just uh, he has a pair of those that look like this, a little cheaper, though. but they're good. Mm -hmm. like All right, next gift. Uh, I mean, Nike Air Max 270. I don't even know what this is. I think we can probably skip this. No one's buying this, you. right? <laughs> Somebody is. Somebody is basketball, maybe? <laughs> I mean, no one's as a gift. No one's gift. Unless, unless this is specifically asked for, you're not presenting someone with this as a gift and saying, here, I got you this. And it's that's right. It's shoes. Uh, all right, next. Life Force membership. You know what Life Force is? No idea. I do, I do not. Well, they they have at home blood testing of forty plus biomarkers. Sounds sounds like a compliment sent uh, compliment insight knockoff. They send a phlebotomist to your home, telehealth oh. visits, personalized health optimization program. So the woman here looks like she's on a yoga mat. Or she's on a yoga mat, but I don't think there's any of that involved. Just like a just kind of a health coach, ground up. Well, this probably is, includes like workout plans. Interesting. Be, that, might, sounds, that sounds pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I don't know so, if I'd gift this to somebody, but it sounds cool. I guess if you just like didn't pay attention to your health and this was sort of a top to bottom, like one stop shopping, I'm just going to fix everything. Kind of good. Uh, Matt, how old is this list? 
Their Black Friday deal. 2024. This is advertising their Black Friday deal. Well, maybe it was published previously in the updated uh, SEO purposes. Uh, I want to know how much it costs. It's all still relevant. They mentioned the Stanley Cup craze. I don't know about that. All right, next. Theragun mini handheld electric massage gun. I didn't know this existed. I have a Theragun. It's too loud to use a Theragun in a normal... You can't sit there and watch TV with other people in the room and use Theragun because no one can hear the TV. <laughs> that is very true. That's very true. Yeah. So if this is quieter, have, that's, that's a good thing. I have a Theragun knockoff. And my... I mean, yeah, it's loud, but it's it's awesome. I'm I'm all for this one. I know. I love these like things. Like portable that you can take with you a little bit. Like my my like case is like this big for the Theragun. Yeah, yeah. it's It's big to bring that thing. This, this is pretty cool. Bringing the multiple uh, oh, heads yeah. around the attachments. Okay, I gotta go back quickly to this life. What was it? Life? <laughs> yeah. Life force. I can't help himself. It's six hundred dollars <laughs> is your initial intake. Six hundred dollars, and then two hundred dollars. No, one hundred and twenty nine dollars a month after that. No one's buying that as a gift. <laughs> Zero people. Zero people are buying that. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Right. Maybe Unless they buy someone them themselves. Who really it. Yeah, this is that's a weird thing. It this would be like a gift that like a mom or dad or somebody gets for themselves for Christmas. And then it's like, oh, this is from Santa. Or from, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. You got this for me cool. when I got it for me. Right. Yeah. Okay. That kind of gift. All right. Um, yeah. I like this. I like the Theragun thing. I think the smaller <laughs> one, if it's powerful, that's a pretty good thing. If it can be still do the job. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, honestly, the Theragun, nothing compared to a good old, like laying on a lacrosse ball. It just doesn't nearly get in as deep as that. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, okay. I'm a big fan of the lacrosse ball too. It's a good I was a big fan of a true massage. Nothing <laughs> yeah. gets in there like that. Yeah. I, I, never, I hate this. I really do not like really? <laughs> my muscles being squeezed by people. Yeah. Is mm. it just the is it just the the vulnerability? The intimacy. With, no, yeah. the, it hurts. I don't know. I, I like to do That's my weird. own hurting of my muscles, but with the cross balls and things. I don't I don't know. I don't know why you never pay for it. I love I love a good massage. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, for another day, we'll have that debate, I guess. Uh, all right, the Hoka Clifton Nine, Doug. You probably know more about the shoes than I do. Is about you as well. Uh, Hoka's yep, I'm a hard gal. the most famous sneaker in the world. Well, I can't believe I've said that sentence. That I mean, I thought this was a Hoka's are loved by shoe. runners. They're loved by uh, walkers. Walkers. They're loved by Joe Biden now. Oh, he, he wears Hoka's. Right? Wow. Yeah. Uh, everybody's yeah, wearing Hoka's. Yeah. I did just it's give a, my friend Hoka's as a gift. Look at that. No, there you go. It's, I mean, it's a trendy thing. Like, I, I think like people wear them around now. Mm -hmm. It's probably horrible. I don't, know if I, I don't know if I would do that. Yeah, that's got, that cannot be good for your for your muscles and, and feet. Great for running, in my opinion. But you don't yeah. think? I mean, I just don't think you're. I just don't think walking like that is good. I mean, I think. I don't know. I feel like you got to be close to the ground for your foot to do what it's meant to do. Wasn't that thing that? Uh, the ultra guy used to share about the gymnasts getting hurt more at the one Olympics. And they turned out that there was more padding in the floor than usual. And it was mm. messing them up. Mm. That's yeah. fascinating. All right. This one's kind of cool. The plunge. This is, says Joe Rogan it up with the cold plunge. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know if this is his thing or if he just cold plunges in general, but uh, it's, it's, I think it's like, no, oh, it's 5,000 bucks and you get a nice tub, uh, but powerful cooling filtration, sanitation, whenever you want, no ice needed. I want one of these. You do? I want one too. Yes. There's, there's several yeah. of these brands out, and I, I, I always get it. Every time they come up, I'm like, hmm, that sounds really nice. Mm -hmm. Are any of them like like a fifth of the price of that, or are they all? Oh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of them are. A lot of them will do the, like, uh, they'll make the water cold. I mean, you can get just, like, a, a barrel now where you, like, dump ice in it, right? Um, right. Uh, or you, there's some that, like, make the water cold, so cycle the water through, but then it will filtration filter it. Like, this is intended to be like a hot tub where you just kind of always have a cold tub to jump into. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, uh, I tried, I tried to, I tried to pitch Katie on this getting one of these last year, but I think she didn't you just, get a deep, <laughs> just get a deep freezer and then just hop into your deep freezer. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what like, our that's colleague hack. Jerry did. Yeah. yeah. I saw my, my neighbor has one. I saw them getting into their deep freezer outside. And I was like, Oh, that's a cold. But again, one. that just makes it cold. It doesn't filter it. So you still have to change out the water. You still have to do all this stuff. This is a set and forget it. I can just have to change out the water. Can you dumb person? <laughs> I think this, I think this is a fad. Pretty soon everyone's going to stop optimizing things and we're not going to care about cold tubs anymore. And we're just going to say, why was this thing in my garage? This huge $5,000 tub. Oh no, I disagree. 
I totally disagree. But I'm a cold plunger. I love cold plunging because not for like optimal anything. I've, I don't care at all about any of that stuff. I just know it makes me feel so good for the next couple hours afterwards. I feel so alive and alert. It's like it took five shots of coffee hmm. uh, without the jitters. And I just love it. It just makes me feel so good. Well, if that's true, then that's, that's done, worth it. Everybody. If you're great for a few hours every day, then that's yeah, a couple thousand dollars for that is probably worth it. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right. Tell Katie we we yeah. Wrote, tell Katie we're on board. <laughs> <laughs> she listens to this. She uh, yeah. Make it a work expense. Yeah. You can uh, you can talk about it on the show and then and then write it off. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> can I use right. the couple? Uh, of my wife Erin says it says Holden says the Nike shoe is a middle school girl's shoe. So like the uh, that's well, a they, didn't, they didn't put the Stanley Cup on here, but like that uh, uh, middle school girls thing. Uh, and then uh. Our our TikTok person, Bakuldata, says should include some pemp or some earthing shoes. Uh, but their favorite shoe is the Hoka Challenger trekking shoe. Maximalist shoe for trekking. Yeah, and I think I think for it is a good shoe. That's Twitch, oh, right. not TikTok. You're getting a long way trail shoe. without your feet hurting. I mean, it's great. Mm -hmm. I don't know about everyday walking around Hollywood use, but for I would I would agree with that. They also say Dana White uses the cold punch in the morning as his uh, coffee replacement. See, I believe it. But there we don't go. want to replace coffee. Coffee's good for us. We just talked about that yesterday. There's many. <laughs> have many your co have your coffee, coffee in the cold plunge? Can you do that? <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Oh, 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 uh, contrast. Oh. Heat, hot Great. coffee, cold plunge. That sounds great. <laughs> be better. All right, meow, meow. Finally made it to a live stream. Welcome, meow, meow. Nice to have you here. Um, and Bridger says, post long run for sure makes legs feel less crappy. Yeah, I don't know if there's really great science behind the cold thing for muscle recovery, but. Like everyone yeah. reports that, including me. Same thing. Holden does it. You just, it feels like you're better later or you recover faster. Uh, I, I like a hot, a hot bath after mm -hmm. a run. But that's because I, I vastly prefer like the hot over the cold. Like if I could mm -hmm. be hot and over cold anytime, mm -hmm. I will always pick being hot. Me too. We're, we're on the same page, Isabel, with a lot of these things. Uh, Sorry, Doug. Okay. Yeah. Moving on. Cowpack Luca Duffel. Yeah, I don't want this. I don't know what this is. I don't care about it. This is like a, What's so special like about this? Cool guy. It's uh, got a lot of pockets. So it's like you wear it to your duffel bag, but it looks cooler. It looks like a fashionable kind of thing. Again, this is like the opposite of carrying around the Dasani bottle to try to look like you're not trying too hard. This is trying too hard to me. Get a duffel bag that costs $3. Classic, you know, blue bag with white uh, white ropes, straps, and then that, that looks cool. It's like this, a disposable is, duffel bag. Is that what you're, is that what you're going yeah, for? I don't, you have to I don't know if every, this is the... Every week. <laughs> I don't know if this is the same thing, but I did see like a duffel bag the other day that you can like, that it folds out and then it's it's basically like a like a hanging clothes bag. Mm -hmm. So you like put all your clothes in, but then you like... Psh, 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 yeah, and it turns into a too. duffel bag. That I thought was pretty cool. That For traveling, that'd be nice. For traveling. Oh, wait, this is like a fold out, like a hang in a closet, like for a travel person. That, like a, that's what that's what I saw. I don't know if yeah. this is that. Yeah, that'd be great. I think that instead good. of whatever this is. Get that. You know what, Matt? You and I, I forget. Maybe you mentioned it on a podcast one year, and uh, my mom got it for me, or maybe it was the other way around. Um, but uh, we had these duffel bags that were, I think, built for triathletes. Do you remember yeah. That? Was it was it OG OGGI or was it something yeah like that? something like that? Um, and it was a good bag. But what I really liked about it was the uh, the compartment at the bottom for your wet clothes. It kept everything, yeah. kept yep. it dry from yep. everything else. So like yeah. if you're using it for the gym or using it for, wherever, I don't know, going to the pool or whatever, like you just throw all your wet clothes underneath and it had this like waterproof layer that kept everything above it from getting wet. I thought that was yeah. brilliant. Mm -hmm. That's a, that called, is a true elevated duffel bag experience. Yes. Yeah. It's called OGO, O-G-I-O. I still have that duffel bag and I still oh. use it fairly often. Uh, I don't have wet clothes. I just put like the dirty clothes in it on a trip and keep them mm -hmm. away from the other clothes. And it's nice. It's a good yeah, bag. That's good. Um, all right. We're not this bag. Those were those were free, Doug. They, the, they sent us them. The people sent us them, I think. Oh, they did? Yeah, we put it we put it on our uh, Nomad Athlete Radio gift gift guide one year. Ooh. We disclosed it. That. it was free. All right. On to the next. Um, spike ball. You know the game Spike Ball? Taking the beaches oh, by yeah. storm? This is fun. <laughs> I like Spike Ball. Spike Ball's been around for a long time. I think it's just yeah, like hitting its grave. Yeah, like when I was in college, people played Spike Ball. That yeah. was a, so, a yeah, so if you're gonna give this a yeah. gift, they probably already have it. Is one problem with this as a gift. But, Accurate. Yeah. But it's it's super fun. I'm I'm all for this. It's a great game. It is fun. It's a good game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doug, you haven't said anything. You seem like a spike ball guy. 
You're not. <laughs> you, you do seem like a spike plug. I, yeah, I mean it's awesome. I love it. You don't. You're not one. Of, you don't bring that block game. You don't bring those that stack of blocks to the to the beach. People throw around. Have you seen those? Mm. Wooden blocks. Uh, stack of blocks. Yeah, I do know what you're yeah. talking about. I, wooden wooden blocks. That's like, like a it's, It looks like Jenga, but a little bit larger, and they throw it around the beach. I don't. There's something. It. Oh man, what's the what's that game called? Jenga. Um, no. Cub. <laughs> Cub game. K U B B is the. the uh, no, I'm a big fan of spike ball because it's an active game. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the problem with a lot of the beach games like bocce, which I like, or mm -hmm. cornhole, cornhole or right Those or can jam. Games. I like can jam too. Those are drinking games, right? You're standing around, you're not moving very much, you have a beer in your hand. Spike yeah. ball is like active and you feel real good when you're playing it and you have yeah. fun and then you can go have your beer and, and you've got your sweat on. It's like yeah. sand volleyball. Yeah, you like get to dive a lot. It's good. Moving around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you, Doug. All right, so we like this, except they probably already have it. But we like the idea of this. This is probably the, the grip we oh, most have agreed on. Uh -huh. All right, Nutra Bullet uh, Pro Nine Hundred. We actually have one of these, and we use it a good amount. I don't. It's not a Nutra Bullet. It's a Ninja brand. But the idea is the mm -hmm. personal blender with the upside down cup that you that you blend right in that cup, and then you drink it. Uh, this is this is pretty good. When the blender, big blender's dirty, and you want to do some little job or something, or you're traveling. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> bring it over, like one of these smoothies in hotel. You bring this mini thing, and it's it's really nice. Does it does it blend nuts as well as some of the big blenders do? That's my biggest thing. Hmm. I think it will blend like a typical nuts, like softer nuts, like walnuts. I don't know about these raw almonds and they're showing yeah, like there. almonds and cashews. That's why we we used to have the personal blender and we got rid of it and got the Vitamix instead. For mm -hmm. were you putting the things in in the right order? Probably not. I just like chopping the nuts. The nuts need to be close to the blade so they get chopped up early. Probably not. Mm. Yeah, it, it probably use your ear. I'll, I'll own that one. <laughs> this is this is good. <laughs> All right, next uh, outdoor voices district vision junior sunglasses. I don't wear sunglasses. I'm not a sunglass wearer. I don't, These don't look like color. sunglasses. These looks like they look like eye protection. Is this for somebody who like shoots? District vision, not outdoor. Yeah, district vision. Okay. District Vision makes the best pair of sunglasses I've ever owned. They are quite expensive. I can't remember. I've, in my Rock Creek Runner days, I got them for free. They are so light and so awesome. And uh, they got crushed, and I was devastated. Um, I loved those sunglasses. Those were the first pair of sunglasses that I really, truly, actually loved. Hmm. How'd they get crushed? It's a good good brand. Um, Somebody, like, stepped on them. That Ojo bag comes with a sunglass compartment, a hard shell. It does. I know. Section. My Ooh. district vision sunglasses lived in that compartment for quite a, on many trips. <laughs> That's, that is a really cool feature of said bag because yeah. I I yeah. I have all of the uh, the like free sunglasses that you get like at places. Yeah. I have like 20 of them and I just chuck them when they're done. <laughs> I'm like a gooder what? sunglasses guy now. Um, uh -huh. you're just because they're cheap and they're, they're fine. But they're like... District Vision, man, they were so light. You didn't even know they were on your face. Loved them. Hmm. Doug, needs, Doug needs another pair, everybody. I know. I really do. Yeah. Well, we got to make a gift guide, and then we'll tell them we need a pair. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Okay. All right. The Aura Ring is next. I, I already bashed the Aura Ring because I said when I upgraded, it, it doubled my sleep, and that seems like there's a problem there. If they were telling me the ring was accurate, and then they fixed it by that much. Uh but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's okay. I like the O-ring. It's, it's like a heart rate monitor. It's fun to use for a while and you learn some things and then eventually you probably move past it. But I, I think it's good. Cool for people who want the kind of technology that this provides. I yeah. would never wear an O-ring. I would never. No. No. Why not just wear a, a watch? I don't know. Because at least tells I, me the time too. Yeah, that's, that's to, my biggest thing with the aura ring. Like, and I was going to say this when you mentioned the watch doing all those things. Like it used to be that these were those were the domain of rings and whoops and special things. And now now watches can do it. So I don't know what mm -hmm. that means for these ring companies or like these they, things that only like, do that. They don't tell you the time. To me, like right. you're going to have something on your wrist all the time. At least like at least tell me what the time is. Right. Or be able. Although to a watch you. is much more invasive than a ring. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. Well, speaking of watches, that's next up. Apple Watch Series Nine. My dad just got an Apple Watch. I don't know. It sure wasn't three forty nine like this says. This thing was like eight hundred. He said. Uh, wow. This says GPS only. I don't know what that means. Uh, but anyway, he said it's great. He said it does fantastic things. It's got like EKG stuff if you want. Um, so if you're a heart person, you got that. I, I think it'd be cool to have a, have a good watch, but not. It's just not. Wouldn't really fit in my life. I don't think. 
here's the problem. I wore an Apple Watch for a while. Again, brought to us by a sponsor. Uh, the uh, <laughs> not <laughs> the Apple Watch. Apple Watch. Um, because you wouldn't do it. It was uh, it, it was an app that you uh, that like did gave you workouts, but you had to have an Apple Watch because you went to the gym and it like gave you workouts right. that you did on your on the thing. So they gave yeah, us they gave me a free Apple Watch. I wore it. Nice. Um, um, I wore it and it was awesome. Uh, yeah, but the problem is that I mean you just have to turn off the notifications. If you start getting all your text messages and like all that it's a, stuff. It's a phone on your wrist. It's a phone on your wrist. And so yeah. like it's just so incredibly distracting. You know, if I'm if I'm talking to somebody and my phone buzzes and but it's in my pocket, I can pretty quickly like be like, okay, I'll I'll check that later. You know, and let it go. But if it's on my witch, my, my witch, my watch, or on my wrist, then uh, there's just no way I'm not going to like look at it and want to know, right? Who sent me a text message? So, yeah, that's tough. Yeah, it seems like a problem. All right, we're about out of time here, so let's talk about the last three and then be done. Uh, Allo moves annual membership gift box at home fitness, yoga, and meditation place. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. This is just. I'd want to know more about this. Like the other one. I'm like, well, is this really, is this really worth right. it? Yeah. Okay. The Lululemon double roller. I don't really know why it's double two and one roller. It, so I, why? I wanted Actually, to why? know the inside comes out of it. Oh, oh so no. then, it, and then it's a foam roller. And then I think the inside is like harder. So it's like a different compound. Oh, okay. I thought oh, this was pretty cool. That's cool. Uh huh. Yeah. Everybody needs a good foam. I, roller. I like a good foam one. roller. Yeah. 64 bucks though. Instead of like, 12 bucks well because it's two it's yeah. two phone colors. you're right and it's two all right and finally the nordic track commercial studio cycle uh this i guess is like peloton but way more features maybe for the more serious cycler cyclist who doesn't care about the you know the tv in front of him with the with the coaches on there because i don't think they have that uh oh look at the picture it's a huge tv oh, oh. massive yeah, yeah. You're right okay and virtual looks, riding, yeah. this is a peloton competitor nordic mm -hmm. track version of the peloton Two thousand bucks. I heard Peloton is like just, just like tanking now. Is that is that right? No one, oh, really? no one wants Peloton oh, really? anymore. I thought I heard that. Oh, I didn't know that. Just, oh, yeah, they, they have boom, like pandemic just boomed for them, and then oh. I think mm. just, oh. it's people are going back to gyms. Yeah, yeah everybody's doing the uh, what's the other thing that uh, people ride these days? Um, you see them Strava all the time. Uh, what's it called? Where you like actually racing other people? It feels like you're in a Peloton of bicycles. Uh, I know what you're talking about, but I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Ritter says she had the bike. Software is garbage. Oh, huh. Look at that. I have I have I just a regular old eight. bike that doesn't have any software, and I gotta say, I love it. Outdoor bike or indoor? Have, it's a, an indoor trainer, just like Zwift. a Peloton, but it just doesn't have the doesn't have the screen. But how do you get stimulated? Zwift. I I pull up YouTube videos. Oh, okay. <laughs> All Follow right, those instead. <laughs> All right, good. Well, thanks for everyone for listening. We're out of time. We got to go on to the next uh, Outlier Health team meeting is happening. <laughs> so we got to get out of here. Uh, but thank <laughs> you for coming to this Friday edition of the Plant Based Morning slash Afternoon Show. Never know what to call it on Fridays. Uh, but thanks for coming and Morning, uh, spread the word, please. We want, to, we want people to come to this Friday show, even though it's a new one. Have a great weekend, everybody. Mm -hmm. We will All see right. you on Monday or Goodbye. Tuesday.